Welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney and this is Creative on the Cheap. Today I have got three very budget-friendly fall DIYs for you. Thank you to Sherbonder for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the projects. For this first DIY, I'm going to be making a little wagon using one of these little wooden crates from Dollar Tree, as well as some of the little wooden stems that I had stockpiled. If you can't find these guys, you know what I always say, go outside, be one with nature, trim a branch, get yourself some wood stems. Now this wood crate was actually from a different project so that's why it's already brown. I just used the brown cream wax from Deco Art that Hobby Lobby sells to coat that. Now to attach the wheels to my crate I'm going to be using my dual temp Sherbonder glue gun. I love this because like I said it's dual temp so I can set it for the cool to use the fabric or the foam glue sticks and then I can turn it on the high to use the wood glue sticks. So this is the wood glue stick. I've used these many times on my channel. I really, really like them. It's a very strong hold in my opinion. And all I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of this glue down on each of the stems and then attach these to the bottom of the crate. I did want to quickly mention that um, the wood glue was dripping just a little bit. Um, nothing where it was a constant drip or anything that would annoy you because that is one of my biggest pet peeves. So definitely make sure you just have something underneath it just because this glue gun gets nice and hot. So you may experience that. Now to attach the handle, I'm going to be using some uh, popsicle sticks. So first I need to cut a small piece to put on the underside of the wagon. And then what that'll allow me to do is to go ahead and attach the long piece of the popsicle stick to that. And again, I'm just going to use the wood glue to make sure it's nice and secure. Now I need to make a little handle for the top of the long popsicle stick. So I'm just taking this little twisty tie that I had. It was black, which was perfect. And I'm trimming it down so I can make just a little oval shape with it. But before I attach it to the popsicle stick, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the popsicle stick with some of that brown cream wax. And then once that's painted, I'm gonna take my Detail Tip Sherbonder glue gun. It, this is my most favorite Sherbonder glue gun out of all of them. It's cordless, you get just the precise amount. It's perfect for all those areas where you just need a little bit. So I know you guys see me use it all the time and I just love, love, love this glue gun. So I'm just gonna put a little glue on here, just regular glue, and I'm gonna attach the little black handle to the top of the popsicle stick. Oh, you. Now I'm ready to work on the little sign for the side of my wagon. So this is a free printable that I made. I will make sure to link it down below. I'm actually gonna use the very last one, which was a stencil I made last year for a Lazy Susan project. I will link that video down below if you'd like to see. Then what I'm gonna do is just cut out a small piece of cardboard so that I can kind of stabilize this sign a little bit. And then to attach the sign, I'm just gonna use a glue stick to glue it directly to the cardboard. And then once that's done, I'm gonna take some twine and I am simply going to hot glue a piece of it to the back of the sign. And what this allows me to do is be able to change this out without it being permanent. So that way I can use this little wagon for Christmas if I want to, and it's not permanently glued on there. Now it's time 
time to fill the wagon. So you could do several different things. I actually saw at Hobby Lobby really tiny little hay bales that would be so cute in here. I know Dollar Tree sells mini ones, but they're kind of big for a mini, if that makes sense. So what I decided to do was just take some raffia and I'm just kind of cutting it, wrinkling it up, and I'm just gonna put that at the bottom of my wagon. And then I played around with um, some of the pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I had a couple of the bigger ones along with the new mini ones that they have in the four packs. And I messed around with it until I decided I just wanted to use all of the little mini ones. And one thing I don't like about these pumpkins um, is the waxy look of the stems. So I went ahead and painted each of the stems with some truffle Waverly chalk paint. I'm ready to do the finishing touches on my wagon um bailey was facetiming me here and then she's like i want to say hi to the camera so she's saying hi here or something i don't really remember but anyway um i'm going to take some more of the raffia and then i am going to just cut little pieces of it and just kind of tuck it in here and there in the wagon and then this little wagon is all finished For the second project, I'm gonna be making some 3D looking pumpkins using these little pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I'm also gonna be using the USB glue gun. Now this one I just recently got and I love it. It's probably my second favorite Sherbonder glue gun. What's special about this one is you plug it in to charge it and it has a working time of about 75 minutes. The detail tip cordless one, um, you get about three minutes of work time and then you have to put it back on the charger. But this one, you charge it up, you use it for a good almost 75 minutes. So the first thing I need to do is break down these pumpkins. So I'm just gonna take these stems out. What I found the easiest way is just kind of push it one way, flip it over, push it the other, and then the little stem piece pops right out. I will put those aside and the raffia aside. I will not be using any of that for the rest of this project. Then I'm gonna hit these labels with my heat gun and get all the labels removed. Just close your eyes and let them I know it's hard to fall asleep, but do your Now it's time to start assembling the pumpkins. So originally I was just going to do two pumpkins that were going to be one piece that was solid with the two halves glued to it. You certainly could do that if you wanted to, but um, after I got it assembled, I was like, ah, I think I want to add some more to it. And as I'm assembling these, I am making sure that the um, holes, like as you can see here, it's all lined up and that the holes are all at one end. So that can be the bottom because I'm not going to use those holes again for my stems. So like I said, I got it like this and then I was like, mm, I think I'm going to add two more pieces. So that's what I end up doing. That I go to when I want to hide from all the shades of blue. Cause at times I think of leaving, my mind takes me back to fall. When the snow begins to sing, at night to warm. Once all the pieces were glued on there, I'm just going to take my detail tip glue gun and just get in there to kind of secure at the top, which is another reason why I just love this little tiny point. You can get in there and I'm just, you know, giving a little extra security. And then once that's done, I am ready to go ahead and fill all my holes with some spackling. Now 
now that the spackling is all dry, I'm just going to use some of this folk art chalk paint in the color Monarch. And I'm going to paint the pumpkin everywhere. Now, I decided that I'm just going to paint it. I'm not going to go back in and distress it with brown wax. I'm not going to whitewash it. But those are options you certainly can do. You could do white pumpkin. You could do cream color pumpkins. You could do green. You could do blue. You could do whatever you want, whatever color. But I decided I'm just going to stick with good old orange colored pumpkins. Now, once this one was done, I was like, it really needs a second pumpkin. And I happened to be talking to Jennifer from a little bit of common crazy on the phone. And she gave me the idea. She's like, Hey, what if you, do you have any more of them? And I said, yeah, I do. And she said, why don't you make a squatty pumpkin? So I'm going to make a squatty pumpkin. Thanks to my pal, Jennifer. Feel the wind. If you look close, you see the lilies dance and how they slowly I'm counting years as they go by. Now all the lilies are gone and aces brought to life. Cause at times I think I'm leaving. My mind takes me back to fall. When the snow begins to sink. Both my pumpkins are all painted so now I'm just going to take more of these little Dollar Tree stems and I'm going to glue them on top to make the stem of the pumpkin and then I debated whether I wanted to add leaves to this or what I wanted to use to tie it so I dug around in my random bin of randomness which is when I break projects down and I don't use pieces I just throw it all in this bin and I had like this brown suede ropish looking thing and then a piece of twine so I decided just to use that to tie some bows at the top of the um, stems or at the base of the stems I should say and then after I got those tied on I decided it needed a little curly Q tendril so I just took some of the wired twine from uh, Dollar Tree and I just wrapped it around a sharpie marker to get it nice and curly and then I just hot glued that to the top of the pumpkin and voila these pumpkins are finished. The last DIY, I'm going to be making an apple barrel and I'm going to be using some items that are at the Dollar Tree price point. However, these wreath forms are from Dollar Tree and I know there is a way to make a Dollar Tree version of this. I had started planning it but then ran out of time before I needed the video to go up. So I'm going to keep working on it and hopefully bring you a Dollar Tree item, but uh, a version, I'm sorry. But like I said, these were all at the same price point. You're going to need three packs of the paint stir sticks from Home Depot. Those were 98 cents each. Each. two of the embroidery hoops whatever size you want as far as how big you want your bucket to be 40% um, off the small one made it less than a dollar 40% off the larger hoop made it a dollar 12 so very close to the Dollar Tree price point For the first step, you need to get a base on the bottom of this apple basket. So let me just save you a step here. I originally thought, oh, I don't mind if you can see the base on the bottom. So I traced the outside of the hoop. Don't do that. I then went back in and traced the inside because I wanted it set. I wanted it set inside the hoop because I just didn't like how it looked if it had just been glued to the bottom of the hoop. So your first step is to go ahead and just trace the inside of the hoop with some foam board from Dollar Tree and then cut it out. Once 
once the piece of foam board is cut out, you're just gonna take some hot glue and I'm using Sherbonder's foam glue sticks just to run a very thin bead of glue around the circle here. And then I'm gonna stick it in the hoop and then I'm gonna flip it over and on the bottom, I'm gonna go in with some regular hot glue and go ahead and fill in any of the gaps and make sure that it's super secure in the base of the hoop. All of my pieces are ready to go and I've decided to use some of the Elephant Waverly chalk paint and I'm gonna paint one coat on all of this. Now originally um, I was thinking I was gonna assemble all of this and then paint it and I'm really glad I didn't do that because as I was putting it together, I kept thinking to myself, man, if I had assembled this and then gone back and painted, it would have been a pain, like really a royal pain. So definitely paint everything first. I'm again, just one coat of paint and then you will be ready to start assembling your little apple basket. Now it's time to assemble this basket. I'm going to do the best I can to explain it. I'm sorry if my arm gets in the way. This was definitely, I had to think about it really hard to make sure I got it right. So the first thing I did was I picked up that hoop and then I took all of my little paint stir sticks and I just went in and I set them all in there. The next step was to go ahead and secure one painter stick down at the base as well as to that top hoop. Now where you put the glue in my opinion does make a difference as far as neatness. So you want to move the painter stick out of the way, put the glue directly on the base of the apple basket, stick your painter stick down, and then that will look nice. And then you're just gonna work your way from the front to the back. So I basically started with the first one. I glued it down at the bottom. I also glued the top hoop to that one where the paint stick dents in. And then I would do one on the left, do one on the right, left, right, left, right. But the only painter stick that was actually secured to the top hoop was my first painter stick. I know. It's a lot of information. If you have questions, please feel free to ask them down below. Um, but that's how I did it. And you'll see why in a minute, because you don't want to secure both places as you're going around. So hopefully that's a good explanation and you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Oh, will kill me as long as I got you. I was running from myself those days. Always breathless search for something safe And then I smashed into that golden face For the first time I don't run away We danced together till we got it right Ups and downs through many days and nights When it's time to insert the last paint stick, you're gonna put some glue at the base here. Now this one you kind of have to wedge in, so you're actually gonna slide it in and kind of push it and wedge it between the last two because you'll notice is if you go around and you're trying to get them side by side, um, it'll overlap with one, but if you do it this way, it'll be perfectly fine. And now it's time to go ahead and start attaching all of the top pieces to the top hoop. Now it's time to secure all the pieces. So you wanna find your first piece that you glued, the only one that's secured, and I'm going to go ahead and count on both sides to find the exact opposite piece, there it is. And I'm gonna make sure that I secure this to the hoop directly across from that one. So there we go, those two are directly across from each other, nice and equally done. Then I'm gonna turn it 
to the side and I'm gonna do the same thing. Those two secure pieces, I'm gonna to count towards each other, find the center piece, glue that in the center, find the opposite, glue it, and you do basically just keep doing that for each secure piece that you have. You just work your way to you find the middle and you secure it and that's that. So I'm gonna kinda of let you watch this. If Again, if you have any questions, um, let me know down below. It's definitely trickier to explain this than I thought it would be, but hopefully you kind of understand how to get these evenly spaced. And I'm ready now that this is all secured to go ahead and go in and finish up my painting on this. So I'm gonna take some of the steel Waverly chalk paint and just dry brush this all over the basket. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna take some more of that brown cream wax and I'm just gonna kind of rub on edges, rub here and there, just to give it a little more authentic look. And then this little apple basket is all finished. There you have it, three more fall DIYs, two of which could be used for multiple seasons. Let me know down below if you own a Surebonder glue gun or are thinking about getting one. As always, I love to know which one of these projects are your favorites, so let me know that too because it helps me guide my channel. And now a little something special for you. Well, that's cool, you paint stirrers. What? You're making a trash can with paint stirrers? Oh, it's not a trash can, it's an apple barrel. Yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> it's not a trash can. You think this looks like a trash can? No. You just said, oh cute, you're making a trash can. Why would you say that if you didn't think it looked like a trash can? I was joking. Why would you joke about something like that? I don't know. <laughs> what is an apple barrel? It holds apples. No. Normally they're wide and short. Can you just stop talking, please? Did you know that there is a line of acrylic paints called Apple Barrel? Yes. I, I, I didn't even invite you in here. I don't even know how you showed up in here. Diane texted you. Mm-hmm. I hope it. Mm-hmm. I love you a whole bunch. I love you too. Thanks again for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and here are some more that you might enjoy. I will see you in the next one. Bye.